Okay, we're looking at a GE range. We're going to replace both front infinite switches. So this one here and this one over here. First thing I'll do, just so I don't accidentally mix them up, I'm just going to remove the, the knobs off of each switch that I'm going to be working on. It just helps me so I don't accidentally replace the wrong switch because they all look the same from behind. So from here we're going to pull the range out, get to the back, so we can get to the wiring. Okay, uh, we've already unplugged the unit, obviously we're behind it. We're going to go ahead and remove our panel to access our console. Uh, so it's held in place with some quarter inch screws. So now with that off, uh, we can see our switches up here at the top. Um, so the two that we're going to replace are the two on the end. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go around to the front and then uh, uh, unmount the switches from the front. All right, each switch is held in place with two uh, Phillips screws. So we're just going to take them out. They're very small, easy to drop. Do the same for the other side. Alright, and then now we can go back to the back of the unit to uh, replace our switches. Okay, so uh, we have our new switches here. Uh, I'm just going to pull the old switch out. And what I have to do is I have to look at the actual each terminal is labeled um, and the same on the new one now a lot of times they'll switch uh, the terminal location so we have to pay close attention to make sure that we get the right uh, wire in the right spot you can't just go in the same location because like I said they will change right so we got that one done we're going to do the exact same thing on the other one over here Now we can go around to the front and uh, fasten the uh, switches in place. All right, so we're going to go ahead and mount our switch in position. Just going to slide it into the uh, to the hole here. And as you can see, the shaft is a lot longer than what we need. It's a universal replacement switch because of the age of it. Um, so once we get the knob and everything here, we can we'll snap off at the right length to make sure it fits properly. We're going to do the same thing on the uh, the right side here to secure our switch. All right, so that's in there now. Um, what I will do at this point is. Uh, we'll just go ahead and test the switch now before we get too far and uh, make sure everything's going to work properly. So I'm going to go ahead and plug the range in, turn on the burners, make sure they want to heat up. Okay, so we have power into the unit. We're just going to go ahead and turn it on. We have our service element light that is illuminating now. Uh, it was not doing that previously. And I feel heat coming from the burner. I don't want it to get too hot before I... Uh, repair it that way I don't touch it on accident so all I wanted to do is make sure we were fine we're going to do the same thing for the other new switch turn it on you can see the surface light unit light is illuminating I'm already getting some heat off the burner I'm going to go ahead and shut that down and I just want to verify our other switches alright the surface light is not coming on on this one here but the uh, the burner is functioning and on the other rear one, obviously the light comes on and we're get, beginning to get some heat. So I'm going to turn it off. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and disconnect power. I'm going to shorten my knob shafts here for the switch and then uh, we'll go ahead and uh, tighten up the back panel here. So what we have here, we have, we have our shaft here. 
Um, I uh, looked at the one next to it. It's a replacement. There are five cubes on this one. Uh, we'll say that each little segment is like a caterpillar body or something. Um, so we need to make this one five as well. So that we'll count one, two, three, four, five. And then I'm going to count again just to make sure. One, two, three, four, and I'm on the fifth. And then I'm just going to take this, support it with my needle nose, and then just snap it with my channel locks, just like that. So now I have my the right length. I can slide my knob on, and then the unit will function properly. So go ahead and put this knob back on. And now we're going to do the same on the other side. Okay, so we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to count five. One, two, three, four, five. Count again just to make sure that my eyes didn't deceive me. One, two, three, four, and I'm on the fifth. Take my channel locks. And. Nope, I didn't get it all. That last bit. And we go ahead and put that knob on just like that, and it'll function properly. So now we're going to get to the back and install our back panel. Alright, so we're just going to go ahead and install our panel. Uh, the unit is unplugged, so there's no risk of shock. Just kind of get it in position and start to secure it with the screw. Alright, so we're just going to push the unit back in and plug it in.